It has been a good long while since I've done a countdown. And I figured I would do a countdown on a topic that I plan to redo. My top 5 favorite and hated finales from video games. I did this list in the past and the video itself was fine I guess. I had to delete it. I don't want to talk about it. Anyways, is I figured I would redo it again, but this time with a couple of changes. That those who have seen my original list know my favorites and hateds. But for this list, there's gonna be a few new ones and maybe a couple old ones to be added on to this list. As expected, you always want uh, to see a game always end off with at least a great finale or just get a terrible finale. There are three major components that I'll be judging from these finales that I picked in three separate categories. First off, the final level. A final level has to be very challenging and very well placed out and testing the skills of the player that learned everything throughout the game. Or it could just be a lot of nothing. Secondly, the final boss. Like the final level, you gotta at least end the game with a really good final boss. You gotta at least have the fight be a challenging, a test of skill and all that stuff. Or it could just be a load of nothing fight that makes you question what's the point. And lastly, the ending. You gotta, you gotta make the ending satisfying, whether it be emotional, feels good to end the adventure on a high note. Or you could just get an ending that makes you question what's the point of going on this adventure in the first place. All these three components will be judged on based on where I place these levels and how I personally feel about them. So without further ado, let's get started. This is gonna get hairy. You ready for this? Let's do it. There are quite a few final levels, finales I would place at the very bottom of the number five words since there are just some that really downright suck. But the sign which one was pretty weak with only a couple positives I can name off uh, was kind of easy. And one that some of you might kind of disagree with. But to be honest, I really don't like this finale of Sly 2, Anatomy for Disaster. This is honestly my least favorite finale in the series uh, by far. And there are just quite a few issues. For one thing, the level itself doesn't really scream final level to me. It just seems like a basic simple level with an annoying layout that just makes it kind of irritating to traverse. And secondly, the levels based on this finale. The levels themselves are just nothing too exciting. Sure, it's cool to utilize all three characters in this finale, but... That's where it just ends there, because the finale itself with these levels and using the characters' gimmicks are just simple and basic stuff. They're nothing really impactful, and the levels themselves aren't really that challenging. Except for one. The frickin' TNT level, where you have to take Sly into a barrel full of TNT and pick up these fuses, all three of them scatter around the map. What makes this section irritating is if you get caught by the guards or attacked once, you fail. Sure, there are checkpoints that makes it a bit easier, but traversing around this confusing layout combined with the fact that getting spotty equals instant death just makes this irritating to do. Easily my least favorite level in the whole entire finale. And the villains themselves aren't even anything noteworthy. A arpeggio is a character who won immortality by rebuilding clockwork, but he gets betrayed by Neela because, yes, she just wants to betray everyone since nothing about her is explained on why she wants immortality, betraying everyone, and all this stuff. And even with her being in, in the, the model, which she dubs of name Clockla, does it really do anything? Clockla is just flying around the map, and even when she spots you, she doesn't even attack you. So, what's the point of having Clockla flying around the map? It just drags the finale. And after you do all of that, and lure Carmelita over here so you can use the tail gunner, then there's the final boss. And honestly, this fight kinda sucks. Well, actually, it sucks. The, 
first phase of the fight is literally a turret section. Seriously? You're gonna make your final boss a turret section that manages to be mo both frustrating and easy at the same time. Aim, you have to shoot down the projectiles that Quakwa is throwing at you, and these electrifying rings. It's really annoying to deal with all of these hazards at the same time, but yet I beat it first try because it's still manageable. Even when she shoots a projectile at you if you don't shoot her in the face. And after you go through all that, the second phase begins where you have to traverse around platforms. I thought this would be fine, since there are two final bosses I know about that actually do this quite well. Except this one is just basic and boring jump over, glide towards, rinse and repeat, until you get on top of the giant owl and smack it in the face. Yeah, this phase is a lot of nothing. And after you bring the bird down, Quackle is still active and you take control of Murray to pry open the beak, Bentley to destroy the lasers and retrieve the hate ship, and thus, the whole thing explodes and... Yeah, this final boss is just a yawn fest of nothingness going on. Like, what the hell? Then there's the ending, which is... Kind of the only positive thing I can say, Clockwork is now in com out of commission for good, uh, and a little a repaying debt had to be uh, repaid. Karma Leader's name is cleared up, and they both have a little chat, but then Sly leaves. <laughs> what a sly bastard he is. Overall, this finale just feels like nothingness to me. It's not even that exciting or interesting, it's annoying, it's frustrating, and the final boss wasn't worth it. Yeah, but at least the ending was nice. That's all I can say about it, to be honest. This is gonna get hairy. You ready for this? Let's do it. Upon replaying most of these video games, I have experienced them to see if my opinions on the finales remain the same. While this finale is pretty low on the list, I still appreciate Dungeon Defenders for ending with a great final level. The finale crystalline dimension can be accessed after gathering all four of the interior shards, and thus, this is the legendary hero's final adventure of this dangerous journey. The finale itself is split up into four different sections, well five, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Each of these sections are different lengths, and you're faced off against every single enemy type throughout the entire level. Every enemy here uh, is all uh, well prepped up, and you need to bring your A game in order to stand a chance. Bring out your best defenses, plan your strategies, and you'll be able to beat the odds. So many enemies will show up, and you have to defend all the objective points split up throughout the entire level makes this for a pretty satisfying and enjoyable final level, and the music is epic, one of the best final level themes I've ever heard in a video game. This whole finale offers so much, and to make it even better, it brings out a pretty solid final boss fight against the old one. This fight is pretty solid enough to end this great game, as it's split into three sections. The first section, you have to destroy the crystals on his feet while he tries to stomp you. The second section, he'll use his hands to try to crush you and smack you while also shooting a laser from his belly. To beat him, you have to damage the crystals around his weak spots in order to do damage and progress on full to the fight. The last section, you have to damage his head which is the main weak spot of the boss's health. And once you damage him, he'll go with a platform and you have to redo the process again. This fight is done three times, and it doesn't feel too repetitive. It's a great final battle all, in, all the way through, and thus the music is pretty epic, especially during the second half. And thus, after beating the old one, the ending is also pretty satisfying. The heroes return with the legendary parents, and the old one's army army is weakening due to the dark energy. And thus, every hero gathers together to begin a brand new war to finish off the old one's army for good. It's a shame that the sequel didn't even bother to continue this. Further proves why Dungeon Defenders 2 is a load of shit. This is gonna get hairy. You ready for this? Let's do it. 
So recently, I've replayed a few games just to see if my thoughts remain the same and to do a couple video improvements. And upon replaying them, um, especially one of my favorite sequels, replaying Lost Planet 2 really made me see how much the finale blows. It's a shame that this sequel has such a lame finale, because everything about it was going in a great direction. Everyone banding up together to stop being the OVG from reaching its final form and causing the planet to go into an ice age. It was all perfectly set up. But then the actual level shows up, and it's just both boring and frustrating at the same time. Since you're dealing with a bunch of powerful acres that are just bullet sponges, it just makes traversing through these, these levels a bit of a hassle. Not only that, the OVG itself shows up in parts of the level, and you have to deal with it since it shoots a projectile that instant kills you but it's easily avoidable, with the rockets. Overall, the thing is just there being a minor nuisance and nothing more. And with the annoying enemies constantly in the way, combined with the freaking layout, just makes this whole entire traversal really so much of a pain in the butt. I hated this finale originally, and upon replaying the game even on the hardest setting, I still hate it. It blows. Just how could they ruin this? They made it even worse with the final boss. You get to the OVG planet and you're ready to fight this thing in an epic battle. Only for you to load down one of its weak spots, place a GPS on it, and bam, dies. Yep, that's the whole final boss. Dies in one hit. Oh, but it comes back to life. And you don't even need to do anything. At all. Just... What? They not only end this game with such a weak final level, but a horrible final boss. It's so sad to see this game end on such a low note because every the whole ending to the game is perfect. It's an emotional scene, everyone is done fighting, and the world is finally at peace. But seeing all of this build up to nothing just makes it feel like an utter waste. And the ending, as awesome as it was, wasn't enough to satisfy me with this other garbage of a final level and boss. <sighs> Lost Planet 3 did it slightly better. Out of all of the finales I would pick for the Ratchet and Clank games, there were two that actually came close. But in terms of picking them out between level, final boss, and ending, the best one is easily up your arsenal. Welcome to Planet Mylon, the command center to Dr. Nefarious Space Station. This station has uh, the Tyranoids all mechanical, and they require a bit of effort to take down, but the level itself is pretty short. But it does offer a bit of challenge with the enemies you have to do with, and a bit of gadget usage in order to get through the level. It is a pretty short level, which is why I couldn't place it any higher, but overall I say it's a pretty great level. And one of the better finales in the game, even the music itself. Well, although I prefer Planet Yielden to be the better finale of Ratchet and Clank, but this level does nail it down on pretty well. Then there's the fine boss fight against Dr. Nefarious. This fight is awesome, and one of the most challenging boss fights in the series, definitely better than the frickin' protopet from the sequel. Oh, Nefarious has barrages of attacks, such as sending out his clones, own Sutaku, his laser guns, shockwave bombs, um, even generating lasers and missiles. How can he do all of this? This guy will take so much punishment and you need to bring your whole best arsenal in order to damage him. Since even with the Rhino, this guy is one of the toughest bosses in the series. And he will definitely keep you on your toes, especially with that hologram attack where he sends in multiple clones to mess with you up. Overall, a pretty great a final fight, all things considered. Then there's the final fight against the Bioboid Raider, and while it's a great conclusion, it's beaten and pretty easy. Shame too, since this was supposed to be the true final boss, but... Yeah, development time screwed them over. 
At least the music is pretty awesome, one of the best in the series so far. Thus beating Nefarious is and his bio-obliterator machine in the ending is also pretty satisfying. Everyone gathers to the movies to watch the new Best Secret Agent Clank movie. Definitely better than the game. Overall, I say Up Your Arsenal is definitely a one of the better finales of the series, even though I would prefer the final level of Ratchet and Clank 2 and the finale that is a crack in time. This is definitely up there as one of the better finales I've seen in the series. One that I appreciate more than a certain other finale I'll get to later. This is gonna get hairy. You ready for this? Let's do it. Just like with Lost Planet 2, I've replayed all the Halo games to see if my thoughts on the finales hold up. I still love Halo 4's finale and still think it's great. Infinite was... just there. And 5 still sucks. The finale of Halo 5 is just bad in so many ways. For one thing, look at the level itself. This barely even feels like a final level, especially with all the enemies spammed in the level. And all of this is just made even more monotonous with the enemies all over the place. You got Covenant and Prometheans all over the place and you have to destroy the cores in order to proceed on through. But it's a pain in the ass when everyone has vehicles that can just destroy you and just makes traversing through this even more irritating. Not only that, but the dialogue here is cringe. Cortana is making fun of Blue Team and taunting him by just looking over their past history. Ooh, wow, so threatening. How about get off your ass and actually do something? How about try to stop them instead of just sitting around doing absolutely nothing? You gather up all the guardians and yet you're still doing nothing. The second section is easily the worst. You're forced into this small room with a defense section that's just irritating to go through because of how many enemies are spam here. The knights are just the worst. They're annoying to shoot at due to the small weak spots on the sides, soldiers all over the place, and this level will kick you down into the curve on Legendary for being so frustrating to go through. This whole level just doesn't feel like a final level at all, it just feels like a standard level that's just frustrating and annoying just like every other level in this freaking game. And the AI teammates? Might as well not rely on them, since they all suck. And after that, you get to the last section where you destroy the core, and... You free Master Chief and Blue Team. And... The ending just builds up to this cliffhanger that... Never gets resolved. Yep, We went through all of this, only for Infinite to not continue off of this. What happened to the Guardians? Who knows? We took care of it. They're gone. They, they don't matter. We, we got rid of them. Easy peasy. Okay, job's done. Halo 5 they didn't need to exist. But, yeah, of course. It's gone. <laughs> I don't get this. You build up this whole entire game only for the ending to build off of a cliffhanger that just goes next to nothing. This story was a whole mess in the first place, and the finale didn't make it any better, especially with the penultimate level being the worst. Overall, 5 easily has the worst final level in the entire series. It's not a good final level, and no matter what, I will never praise this finale, ever. From one underrated game to another, and one of the most beautiful ones I've played, starting with Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And this finale is actually pretty good, 
dare I say, one of the better uh, parts of the game. Since the whole game itself is awesome, this finale offers it even more. The finale willows end, and uh, the whole decay of once once a beautiful place is now just ravaged and ruined, lasting on its former legs. This whole entire finale requires you to break through eight corrupted hearts that are throughout the level. And this level is actually quite challenging, challenging to traverse around. Um, it brings in gimmicks from previous levels and usage of your abilities as such. And you have to use these teleporting gap ways to avoid getting impaled by the spikes and avoiding the lasers. This level can be tricky to traverse around since it's one of the bigger levels in the game. And overall, the music is pretty beautiful and this place is very atmospheric. I really like the way they did this level. It's just great. And I don't know if people say this is one of the weaker final levels, but personally for me, I say it's a bit more enjoyable than Har Mount Haro from the first game. That finale was good, but this one goes even better. The only negative thing is pretty much the mini boss against the Will Stone. It's fine, but the fight itself isn't anything too noteworthy, especially for the penultimate boss of the game. So he's just kind of there, which is what kind of drags down the finale. But then, there's the final boss against Shriek. I've praised this fight in my favorite final bosses list, and this fight is epic. Ick. A pretty challenging fight tests your skill of usage for platforming and such, and avoiding all barrages of attacks. I still see this as one of the most underrated final bosses in any video game, and the music is the best. Easily one of my favorite tracks in the whole entire game. I really like the way they did this finale, as this is the final stand between Ori and Shriek. And after beating in, in Shriek for good, she goes to rest down by her dead parents. It's honestly a very sad moment. It makes me feel bad for her, especially since her backstory goes over what happens. Then there's Ori, where he's down to his last legs. All the memories he had, he will cherish them forever. As now he has to reunite with Seer and restore light to the island for good. It's very emotional and it's sad to see both our hero and antagonist go, but that's just the way it is. I really love how emotional and beautiful the ending is, especially the whole entire game. We may not get a third game, but I definitely say it's better that way, since I think the ending to this game is perfect. This is gonna get hairy. You ready for this? Let's do it. Well, this is my first time talking about the Ratchet and Clank series. It's on a low list. Usually when it comes to this series, uh, there are three final bosses that I genuinely hate so much. Three fights that are just really bad. But since I'm looking at the final levels and endings, endings that took into consideration. And out of three of them, the worst by far is Full Frontal Assault. Say hello to Stuart Zergo's Layer of Doom. And surprisingly, for this level, since all the other previous levels were just standard defense garbage, this is a standard level. Yeah, it would seem fine, if not for the fact that the level itself is short. It's one of the shortest final levels I've ever played in a game. It will take you about 3 minutes to clear. Yeah, that's how short the level is. There's no challenge in the level at all. The enemies, they barely pose a threat. The gunship, he's just done and dusted with being a giant bullet sponge and nothing more. The objective of the level is to disarm two bombs, but since you have plenty of time on the time limit to do that, there's, there's really nothing about this final level being so short and underwhelming. Just, why you bother making this a standard level if you're gonna do next to nothing? Then there's the final boss fight against Stuart Zergo, and he's my second least favorite fight in the series. For starters, you think with him having this overpowered mech suit, he would pose a challenge. But his attacks are just shoot from blaster, fire rocket missiles, stand there and do nothing. This fight is 
boring. There's nothing happening in this fight. Don't let him hit me, don't let him hit me. Is he even trying to kill me? Look at this, he's just doing nothing. Hello, aren't you here to kill me? I would have expected a bit more fighting. No, he spends more time activating the bombs, which you have to disarm since that's the only way you can lose in this fight. Even if he directly kills you, you can just respawn with no problems whatsoever, thus defeating any challenge. But then again, there's no challenge in this boss fight since there's no difficulty option or challenge mode, making the fight even more of a joke. What the... Why doesn't this game have a difficulty setting? That makes no sense. And after beating him, um, the ending was a load of nothing. We captured Zergo and... Uh, we're gonna take him into the authorities for framing Quark, and only for Quark to clumsily drop him to his death, but he survives. And that's it. That's the ending. Yep. That's the end of this whole game. <laughs> I can't even muster up the energy of rage to feel mad at this, because this ending is a load of nothing all the way through. From a boring final level, an uninspiring final boss, and an ending that makes you feel hollow and empty to even play through this game, this is the lowest the series has gotten to by far. And this is supposed to be the series' 10th anniversary, and yet this whole finale just feels like a load of nothingness. Just take my word, use the finale of this game as an example to never play Full Frontal Assault. Zergo is not worth anyone's time. This is gonna get hairy. You ready for this? Let's do it. You might be a little surprised to see this finale at number two, considering those who have seen my old list knows how much I love it. And even then, I still love it. Transformers Fall of Cybertron. This easily is one of the best final levels I played in a video game, and one of the best finales I have seen in any game. Aim. I'll get into why it's number two. But first off, uh, let's go over the whole context of this finale. The Autobots are escaping in away from Cybertron since the whole planet is corrupted with Dark Energon and the life support of the planet is dying. They make their way to the Black Vortex to hopefully find a better home to rest at. But the Decepticons aren't gonna allow that and chase them down um, to try to finish them off. So you get greedy with this five part finale. In the first section you play a sound wave and you have to take care of the cannons inside the ship. It's... Not really the best part, since it's mildly okay, although a bit annoying, but still, it's a good start. This is the only level in the series to have character switching, where you switch to Jetfire and you have to take care of the antenna cables, as well finding a weak spot to destroy them. There are enemies all over the place, and this section can get quite hectic, making it a pretty fun, unenjoyable short section. Then there's the third section where you play as Bruticus, and it's easily my favorite section in the whole level. Destroying all the Autobots, crushing the hole on the deck, just really awesome. It's really fun to play as this big hulking behemoth and just destroying everything. Then there's section 4 where you play as Jazz, and you get to fight against the said behemoth in a pretty good hood penultimate fight as he'll barrage you with missiles and try to swat you away, and even use his helicopter fan to cut you up. He's a pretty tough penultimate boss, but pretty simple to beat once you get down his pattern and figure out what to do. Ooh, so overall, I say he's the better penultimate boss than Devastation. Then, there's the final boss fight against Optimus and Megatron. This is the only time I've seen in a video game where you have the choice to pick which character you want to play as. Play as. And this fight is awesome. Um, sure, it's a basic, simple sword swiping, aping style, but each character has their own abilities, such as Megatron transforming into a tank and Optimus ramming towards you in his truck form. And the QTEs are actually pretty good since these two don't hold back. They just go to town on each other, and there is 
just so much epicness going on, especially with the whole ship breaking apart because of them getting close to the vortex. Overall, this is a pretty great final boss fight to end this great game on. And the ending itself, well, everyone gets sucked into the vortex. I still say that the credits is one of the best in the series. Although I can say that Devastation does have the better final boss, Fall of Cybertron easily comes in at second place. But what could have possibly top this? Well, let's find out. After we look at the number one worst. So I talked about uh, Transformers in a positive light, and now it's back to being a negative again. I've ranted about this, you already know my feelings, and I just want to rant about it again because out of all the finales I played in any video game, the movie game on PlayStation Portable is the biggest middle finger I've ever seen of a finale. Well, let's go over the level first. After going through the worst Megatron boss fight in the entire series, we now get to the cutscene where Shockwave and Starscream have their little exchange. And after that, first off, the level Cybertron is an actual level that you have to go through. And it sucks. The level itself isn't even that interesting. The environment is bland, uninspiring, coupled with boring music, and enemies that are a joke to deal with, and also a pain in the ass to deal with. Especially when dying, but it doesn't even restart you, meaning there's no challenge in this level. At all. And the level, level itself doesn't even have a good layout, it's just a confusing, boring mess of a level. And dealing with the enemies, you're just going around killing them, so... What's the point? This whole thing is just a waste of time, especially since the enemies themselves don't really pose much of a challenge. But what makes this finale even worse is the controls. They are ass. The controls in this game are horrendous to play through and not fun to get used to. Like, what the hell are the controls in this game? It's so bad, but after clearing all the reinforcements, Shockwave comes out of hiding, and thus the final boss fight is the worst thing I've ever seen in a video game. Now in an insult to my favorite character, but this is barely even a boss fight. I've already ranted about how horrible the fight is from my previous video, but uh, it's a load of nothing. And after beating him, what ending? What ending? There's no ending. There's no nothing. There's no satisfaction for beating this game. You went through this whole entire boring, unplayable, unnecessary experience only to get the credits. Yep. No cutscene. And it's all... <laughs> And I thought Stuart Circle was uninspiring, but this shit is just retarded. I played other video games that had awful final bosses and no satisfaction to the endings, but at least they have an ending. This is nothing. There's nothing I can say about this horrendous, garbage, wasted, uninspiring, and taint-sucking final level I can even say. No positives. Boring music, boring layout, boring final boss, us, no satisfaction, and hollow feeling of apathy of playing through this stupid level. This is the lowest I've seen of a finale, and the lowest for Transformers to go. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Can we please move on? Because this finale is utter shit. <sighs> Hopefully, this is the last time I rant about this garbage game. I do hope that this finale is better than the number one worst. What finale could possibly be the best, in my opinion? It makes me really, really happy. Kind of surprise? Yep. Undertale. 
Of course, I get to talk about this great game again, and especially the final level, The Core. This level is very good, and one of the more enjoyable finales I've played, Aid, as the strongest monsters will show up and try to stop you in your tracks. X. Since you're continuing which pathway you want, what makes this level even good is the fact that the music doesn't get interrupted upon entering enemy combat. And no interruptions. I say there's not much challenge in terms of puzzles, but dealing with the enemies bringing out the A game definitely makes for a pretty nice level. The environment is also pretty cool and really good to explore around. But what makes this finale even better in my opinion is of course the bosses. There are multiple bosses encountered uh, throughout this whole entire finale, and the first up is Metaton Neo. And his fight is actually pretty good, uh, one of the more challenging fights, and has a usage of his own gimmick. So overall, a pretty good fight. Then you get introduced to a strangely familiar looking house. Huh. And the monsters are telling you about a backstory between what happened to the king and queen, and how they lost their son, Asriel. This backstory is very tragic. If you're playing Genocide, Flowey will talk about this, but if you're playing Pacifist, as the monsters will mention about what happened here, and why the queen left, and what drove the king to his descent into madness. He wants to break the barrier and free his people, and take revenge on the humans, especially since they took away his son. And thus, you're left with the judgement choice, but yeah, you already know about that. After all that, then we get greedy with the best bosses in the whole entire game. First up is the penultimate fight against Asgore. I've praised this fight in my favorite bosses list, and this fight is still good. One of the more challenging fights, and definitely offers some good emotion, great music, and a deep sense in terms of his story. Overall, a really great fight. If you're playing this in normal run, you get to fight against Flowey in his Omega Nightmare feeling form. This fight is one of my favorite final bosses. In fact, if I he didn't include the one rule per franchise list, this fight would be easily tied with Asriel Dreamer. Since uh, the fight is split up into six phases, while he's attacking you, the souls uh, will teleport you to this alternate dimension to try to attack you with each of their attacks, and you have to save them in order, order to break through Owe's defense and damage him completely. This fight is quite hectic and really great, and the music even shows the emphasis feeling between him losing control and overall, oh, the finishing blow. But if you manage to do Pacifist Run fully and befriend everyone, you get to fight the true final boss, Asriel Dreamer. I praise this fight and still love it to this day. One of the most epic final bosses in the series, well, in any video game. This fight offers a very good challenge, fantastic music, freeing your friends, and overall, the best form of Azrael I've seen. The Hyper God of Death definitely brought out the best with his A game. This is a great finale to end this game on, and the ending is also emotional. Everyone is finally free, the barrier is broken down, it's time to say goodbye to the underworld and everyone you've made friends with along the way. This ending really got me teared up and I was happy to play through this game. The level of the core itself wasn't anything too noteworthy, but everything else beyond it just made it such an emotional finale in terms of history, story, and everything it offers. And overall, I say this is one of the best finales I've played in any video game. And I don't think anything could possibly top this. It depends. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the list, and... Yeah. Share down what your favorite and hate finales in any video game are. Until next time, my friends. I hope you all have a great 